Welcome to the 2023 Pennsylvania CDL practice test. This test has 60 questions with explained answers to help you prepare for this test. Before we get started, don't forget to jumpstart that like button to keep this channel running. Now here is your CDL instructor to walk you through the questions. Question one, a first offense for leaving the scene of an accident involving a CMV or driving a CMV with a suspended license will result in A, losing your CDL at least one year. B. Losing your CDL for nine months. C. Losing your CDL for six months. D. Losing your CDL for three months. The correct answer is A. Losing your CDL at least one year. The key terms in the statement are first offense and or. The key term in the answer option is at least. Federal law requires a minimum of one-year license revocation for anyone with a CDL who leaves the scene of an accident involving a CMV or driving with a suspended license. Keep in mind that this is the minimum and consequences may be much more severe. Question 2. Prior to backing a CMV, it is important to get out and look. G-O-A-L A. Because the inward-facing cameras will reveal that the driver is cutting corners. B. To ensure that there are no stationary or non-stationary objects, including people that you did not see. C. To ensure others know you are backing up. D. Because it is required by law. The correct answer is... B. To ensure that there are no stationary or non-stationary objects, including people that you did not see. The total length of a tractor-trailer combined is about 73 feet. This includes several blind spots while backing. Backing can become increasingly dangerous if you are not aware of your surroundings. Do not take shortcuts while backing. Always get out and look. Question 3. A driver must have a CDL to operate A. A dump truck with a GVWR of 25,001 pounds B. A 12-passenger church bus C. A single or combined vehicle with a GVWR of 26,000 pounds. D. A single or combined vehicle with a GVWR of 28,000 pounds. The correct answer is... D. A single or combined vehicle with a GVWR of 28,000 pounds. A CDL is required to operate a vehicle with a gross vehicle weight reigning GVWR of 26,001 or more. Question 4. Driver fitness as it relates to the readiness of a CDL holder to drive is A. The ability of a driver to complete the recommended amount of push-ups prior to driving. B. Based on the driver's training, experience, or medical qualification. C. Based on the driver's home time schedule. D. Important because drivers need to be in excellent shape to drive. The correct answer is B. Based on the driver's training, experience, or medical qualification. Driver fitness is one of seven Federal Compliance, Safety, and Accountability, CSA, Behavior Analysis and Safety Improvement Category, BASIC, in which a driver's qualification to drive a CMV has been met. Question 5. While backing a CMV, the driver should back the trailer toward the driver's side and not blind side, if possible. A. To avoid needing a helper. B. So that the driver can use the side mirror to see where the end of the trailer is headed. C. Because it's faster. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... B. So that the driver can use the side mirror to see where the end of the trailer is headed. Backing a trailer toward the passenger side, blindsiding, is dangerous because the driver will lose sight of the rear of the trailer. It is safer to back toward the driver's side so the driver's side mirror can be used to help minimize backing accidents. Question 6. While driving a CMV, it is important to look as far ahead as possible, as well as paying close attention to the immediate surroundings because A. Changing lanes and stopping can take lots of distance. B. It is important to know what traffic is doing on all sides of your vehicle. C. You need to look far ahead to ensure you have room to make maneuvers safely. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. 
All of the above ensure that you can make safe and timely decisions while driving. Two very crucial factors for safely driving a CMV are the time and space necessary to maintain safe control of the vehicle. Question 7. When backing a CMV with a helper, what is the most important hand signal you both should agree on? A. Forward. B. Backwards. C. Turning. D. Stop. The correct answer is D. Stop. When using a helper to back a CMV, it is important first and foremost to agree on what hand signal will be used to advise the driver to stop. Remember, while backing, if unsure, stop. Get out and look. G-O-A-L for yourself. Question 8. What are two ways of knowing when to shift a manual transmission vehicle? A. Use readings on oil and pressure gauges. B. Use readings on primary and secondary air tank gauges. C. Use engine speed, RPM, and road speed, MPH. D. Use intuition and engine brakes. The correct answer is C. Use engine speed, RPM, and road speed, MPH. Study the vehicle's manual to learn the operating RPM range. Watch the tachometer and shift accordingly. Learn what speeds, MPH, each gear apply to and shift accordingly. Question 9. When approaching an oncoming vehicle or a vehicle ahead at night with your high beams on, turn off high beams within blank feet of the vehicle. A. 200 B. 150 C. 500 D. 700 The correct answer is C. 500 Driving at night with high beams usually allows you to see ahead about 350 to 500 feet. Avoid blinding other drivers with glare by dimming lights when within 500 feet behind or oncoming. Question 10. In the event of an emergency and needing to pull onto the shoulder of a roadway, which step should be taken to ensure safety for you and others? A. Signal to let drivers know you are leaving the roadway. B. Put on four-way flashers to indicate to others that there is an emergency. C. Pull completely onto the shoulder, call emergency services if needed, and put out safety equipment by exiting the CMV from the side of the vehicle that is away from traffic. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. It is important to never leave the roadway in a CMV unless it is absolutely necessary. Parking on shoulders is very dangerous and can be a contributing factor to very serious accidents. All of the above are appropriate steps for pulling onto a shoulder if needed. Question 11. In which circumstance should you make use of your vehicle's horn? A. The driver ahead of you didn't move fast enough when the red light turned green. B. A pedestrian is taking too long to cross the intersection and the light is about to change. C. When using the horn may help avoid an accident by calling attention. D. When another driver cuts in front of you. The correct answer is C. When using the horn may help avoid an accident by calling attention. Avoid using your vehicle's horn when possible, as it may startle or distract others and cause an accident. Instead, only use the horn when it is absolutely important to call attention in an attempt to prevent an accident. Question 12. Which of the following should you do when confronted by an aggressive driver? A. Ignore rude gestures and refuse to react negatively. B. Avoid eye contact. C. Slow down, back off, Change lanes if necessary to get away from the driver. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Remember, you are a professional driver with a great responsibility to reach your destination safely. Do not engage anyone who may put you, the public, or your vehicle in harm's way. Question 13. Where should you place your warning devices if you must stop on a one-way or divided highway? A. 10 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet toward approaching traffic. B. 25 feet, 50 feet, 75 feet away from approaching traffic. C. 10 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet away from approaching traffic. D. It doesn't matter where you place emergency triangles. The correct answer is A. 10 feet, 100 feet, 
200 feet toward approaching traffic. When placing emergency triangles on a one-way or divided highway, devices must be placed at 10 feet, 100 feet, and 200 feet toward approaching traffic to allow others ample time to move away from your vehicle. Question 14. What action should you take if your vehicle begins to hydroplane? A. Apply pressure to the accelerator. B. Apply pressure to the brakes. C. Release the accelerator. D. Leave the roadway. The correct answer is C. Release the accelerator. If your CMV begins to hydroplane, glide on water, release the accelerator and do not apply brakes suddenly. Applying brakes suddenly may cause the CMV to skid. Question 15. What is off-tracking or cheating? A. When a trailer begins to skid. B. Backing up without getting out and looking at your surroundings. C. While turning, the rear wheels of the tractor and trailer follow a different path from the front wheels. D. While turning, the tires deflate to help bring the trailer around the curve. The correct answer is... C. While turning, the rear wheels of the tractor and trailer follow a different path from the front wheels. Off-tracking or cheating causes the path followed by a tractor to be wider than the rig itself. This leads to the rear wheels of the tractor and trailer to follow a different path from the front wheels. It is especially important to be mindful of this when taking tight turns to avoid hitting parked cars and stop signs. Question 16. When are roads most slippery? A. Two hours of light rain. B. Just after rain begins. C. Three hours of light rain. D. One hour of light rain. The correct answer is... B. Just after rain begins. Right after it starts to rain, the water mixes with oil left on the roadway by other vehicles, which makes the road extremely slippery. As it continues to rain, the oil will be washed away. Question 17. What is black ice? A. A thin coating of glazed ice on a surface that makes the road look wet. B. Ice piled up from snow plows. C. A large chunk of ice that falls off of the roof of a moving CMV. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... A. A thin coating of glazed ice on a surface that makes the road look wet. Black ice is a thin layer that is clear enough to see the road underneath it. It makes the road look wet. Whenever the temperature is below freezing and the road looks wet, watch out for black ice, which is very slippery and can be very dangerous. Question 18. Controlled braking is used when A. Someone pulls out in front of you. You need to stop quickly and have enough stopping distance to do so. B. You need to stop quickly but do not have enough stopping distance to do so safely. C. Your brakes lock up after attempting to stop suddenly. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... A. Someone pulls out in front of you, you need to stop quickly and have enough stopping distance to do so. The controlled braking method is used when you need to stop quickly and have enough space and time to do so. Apply the brakes as hard as possible without locking them up. Steer gently to avoid losing control of the vehicle. Repeat as needed. Question 19. When is the stab braking method used? A. Someone pulls out in front of you, you need to stop quickly and have enough stopping distance to do so. B. You need to stop quickly without much time of space. You apply the brakes all the way until they lock up, then release. C. A steer tire blows and the driver needs to stop quickly. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... B. You need to stop quickly without much time of space. You apply the brakes all the way until they lock up, then release. With this method, apply your brakes all the way and release when they lock up. When the wheels start rolling, fully apply the brakes again. Question 20. What should be the first response to tire failure? A. Release the steering wheel, control brake. B. Hold the steering wheel firmly, stay off the brake. C. Stab the brakes. D. Pump the brake. The correct answer is... B. Hold the steering wheel firmly, stay off the brake. If a tire fails, hold the steering wheel firmly. If a front tire fails, it can twist the steering wheel out of your hand. 
This can be prevented by keeping a firm grip on the steering wheel. Stay off the brakes unless you're about to run into something. Braking too hard can cause the CMV to overturn. Question 21. How much tread depth is required in every major groove on the front tires of a CMV? A. 2 and 32 inch. B. 7 and 32 inch. C. 4 and 32 inch. D. 1 and 32 inch. The correct answer is... C. 4 32 inch. The answer to this question is based on general knowledge, memory. Federal law requires a minimum of 4 32 inch of tire depth in every major groove on the front tires of a CMV. Question 22. Federal and state law requires all CMV drivers to conduct pre trip inspections because A. It will be cheaper to find parts and service near your home terminal. B. Roadside breakdowns are too expensive. C. Pre-trip inspections help find problems that could cause breakdowns and crashes. D. Pre-trip inspections gives drivers an opportunity to mentally prepare to drive. The correct answer is... C. Pre-trip inspections help find problems that could cause breakdowns and crashes. Pre-trip inspections are federally mandated and will help find issues that can cause serious breakdowns and inspections. Never skip out on a pre-trip. Question 23. How much tread depth is required in every major groove other than on the front tires of a CMV? A. 2 32 inch. B. 7 32 inch. C. 4 32 inch. D. 1 32 inch. The correct answer is... A. 2 32 inch. The answer to this question is based on general knowledge, memory. Federal law requires a minimum of 2 32 inch of tire depth in every major groove on all tires of a CMB other than front tires. Question 24. During an in cab pre trip inspection, air pressure should build from 50 to 90 psi within A. 5 minutes. B. 3 minutes. C. 30 seconds. D. 90 seconds. The correct answer is... B. 3 minutes. The answer to this question is based on general knowledge, memory. In a properly operating CMV, air pressure should build from 50 to 90 psi within 3 minutes. Question 25. What emergency equipment is required in the cab of a CMV? A. Three red reflective triangles or three liquid burning flares. B. Spare electrical fuses. C. Properly charged and rated fire extinguisher. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. Federal law requires all of the above. If they are missing during a roadside inspection or emergency, the driver can be ticketed. Question 26. What range should the oil pressure be in while idling a CMV? A. 60 to 50 PSI. B. 5 to 20 PSI. C. 20 to 90 PSI. D. 0 to 5 PSI. The correct answer is... B. 5 to 20 PSI. The oil pressure will vary depending on the state of the vehicle. While idling, the oil pressure range is expected to be between 5 to 20 psi. When the vehicle is in operation, the oil pressure should range between 35 to 75 psi. Question 27. What are some things to check for on the front of your vehicle during a pre-trip inspection? A. Condition of windshield. B. Lights and reflectors. C. Parking, clearance, and indicator lights. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. During a pre-trip inspection, it is important to check all components of the truck that can be seen from the outside. These include, but are not limited to, the condition of the windshield, lights, reflectors, lights, axles, frame, hood, etc. Question 28. What are some key steering parts? A, steering wheel, tie rods, and steering shaft. B. Steering arm, spindle, and pitman arm. C. Power steering cylinder, gearbox, and hydraulic fluid reservoir. 
D, all of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. It is important to know all components of the CMV steering system and ensure knowledge of functionality. You will be likely to know when something looks out of place or damaged. Question 29. What are some signs of exhaust system defects? A. Loose, broken, or missing exhaust pipes, mufflers, tailpipes, or vertical stacks. B. Loose, broken, or missing mounting brackets, clamps, bolts, or nuts. C. Exhaust system parts that are leaking or rubbing against fuel system. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. A damaged exhaust system can be deadly, letting poisonous fumes into the cab or sleeper berth. All of the above are important things to look for during vehicle inspections. Question 30. During a vehicle inspection, what are some important engine compartments to check? A. Engine oil level, windshield washer level, and water pump. B. Coolant level and radiator, condition of all hoses and air compressor. C. Battery level, belts, transmission fluid level, and alternator. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. The engine compartment is one of the most important areas to check during an inspection. All of the above are items that need to be monitored daily to ensure safety on the road. Question 31. On a properly functioning vehicle with dual air brake system and normal sized air tanks, air pressure should build from 85 to 100 psi within how many seconds? A. 15 seconds. B. 45 seconds. C. 90 seconds. D. 60 seconds. The correct answer is B. 45 seconds. On a properly functioning vehicle with a dual air brake system and normal sized air tanks, air pressure should build from 85 to 100 psi within 45 seconds. Check manufacturer specifications for larger tanks. Section 5 Air Brakes. Question 32. What is the function of the air compressor in the air brake system of a CMV? A. Pumps air into the air storage tanks, reservoirs. B. Compresses diesel fuel in the air storage tanks, reservoirs. C. Pumps air into the air conditioner system to keep the cab cool. D. Compresses air pressure in the sleeper or bunk area. The correct answer is... A. Pumps air into the air storage tanks, reservoirs. The air compressor pumps air into the air storage tanks, reservoirs. The key term in the question is air brake system. The air compressor in this question has nothing to do with diesel fluid or the air conditioning system. Question 33. When the pressure in the air tank rises to the cut-out level, the air compressor governor will stop the compressor from pumping air. This happens around... A. 170 PSI B. 60 PSI C. 125 PSI D. Depends on vehicle speed. The correct answer is C. 125 PSI The answer to this question is based on general knowledge, memory. The air compressor governor stops the compressor from pumping air at around 125 PSI. Question 34. A low-pressure warning signal is blank on vehicles with air brakes. A. Optional. B. Recommended. C. Required. D. Banned. The correct answer is C. Required. All CMVs with air brakes are required to have a low-pressure warning signal and must include a warning signal you can see. Question 35. Water and oil sometimes collect in the bottom of air tanks. Why must they be drained? A. Water can replace the air and cause brakes to drag. B. Oil is flammable and can result in brake fire. C. Water can freeze in cold weather and cause the brakes to fail. D. Water and oil don't mix. The correct answer is... C. Water can freeze in cold weather and cause the brakes to fail. During cold weather, water in the air tanks can freeze and cause brakes to fail. CMVs with air brakes come equipped with automatic, manual, or dual-function air tank drain valves. Be sure to know what equipment you will be handling. Question 36. 
What is the method for testing hydraulic brakes for leaks? A. Pump the brake pedal three times and apply firm pressure for five seconds. B. Pump the brake pedal five times and apply firm pressure for 15 seconds. C. Pump the brake pedal nine times and apply firm pressure for 20 seconds. D. Pump the brake pedal six times and apply firm pressure for 10 seconds. The correct answer is... A. Pump the brake pedal three times and apply firm pressure for five seconds. If the CMV has hydraulic brakes and you need to check for leaks, pump the brake pedal three times and apply firm pressure for five seconds. The pedal should not move. If it does, there may be a leak or other problem. Question 37. What three braking systems make up a CMV's air brake system? A. Service, trailer, and parking brake systems. B. Service, parking, and emergency brake systems. C. Back, front, and parking brake systems. D. Trailer, front, and back brake systems. The correct answer is... B. Service, parking, and emergency brake systems. The parking brake system applies and releases the parking brakes when you use the parking brake control. The service brake system applies and releases the brakes when you use the brake pedal during normal driving. The emergency brake system uses parts of the service and parking brake systems to stop the CMV in case of a brake system failure. Question 38. How much following distance does a 60-foot truck traveling under 40 miles per hour need? A. 10 seconds. B. 6 seconds. C. 4 seconds. D. 9 seconds. The correct answer is... B. 6 seconds. For timed intervals following distance, use the following heavy vehicle formula. 1 second required for each 10 feet of vehicle length at speeds under 40 miles per hour. Above 40 miles per hour, use the same formula, then add 1 second for the additional speed. Question 39. What are spring brakes? A. Brakes used for emergency and parking brake systems. B. Powerful springs held back by air pressure. When air is released, the springs allow for braking. C. Brakes that will come on fully when air pressure drops below 20 to 45 psi. D. All of the above. The correct answer is... D. All of the above. All trucks, truck tractors, and buses must be equipped with emergency brakes and parking brakes. Spring brakes are usually used to meet this requirement. Question 40. How do you know if your vehicle is equipped with anti-lock brakes? A. A yellow colored lamp with the letters ABS will be located on the vehicle's instrument panel when the vehicle is turned on. B. There's no need to know. C. The CMV will brake faster than usual. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... A. A yellow colored lamp with the letters ABS will be located on the vehicle's instrument panel when the vehicle is turned on. Your CMV will have a ABS malfunction warning light that will illuminate when the vehicle is first turned to the on position. All trailers manufactured on or before March 1, 1998 are required to have ABS brakes. If the trailer was manufactured prior to that date, check under the vehicle for the ECU and wheel speed sensor wires coming from the back of the brakes. Question 41. After starting a trip, inspect the cargo and its securing devices within the first blank miles. A. 79. B. 50. C. 65. D. 85. The correct answer is... B. 50. Incorrectly loaded cargo can pose a threat to others and yourself. Inspect the cargo after starting a trip within the first 50 miles. Question 42. It's important to recheck your cargo after driving A. 400 miles or 7 hours B. 150 miles or 3 hours C. 250 miles or 5 hours D. 175 miles or 2 and a half hours the correct answer is B, 150 miles or 3 hours. It is extremely important to ensure that your cargo is secured and safe on the road. Recheck the cargo securement after driving 150 miles or 3 hours. Question 43. How many classes of hazardous materials are there? A, 7. B, 10. C, 9. 
D6. The correct answer is C9. Hazardous materials are products that pose a risk to health, safety, and property during transportation. There are nine classes of hazardous materials. Question 44. A tank endorsement is required for any CMV designed to transport any liquid or gaseous materials in a tank having more than blank gallons and an aggregate capacity of blank gallons or more. A. 500. 1,100. B. 119. 1,000. C. 120. 1,500. D. 115. 1,200. The correct answer is... B. 119. 1,000. The answer to this question is based on general knowledge, memory. A tank endorsement is required for any CMV designed to transport any liquid or gaseous materials in a tank having more than 119 gallons and an aggregate capacity of 1,000 gallons or more. The liquid or gas does not have to be a hazardous material. Question 45. Placards are a minimum of four signs placed on the outside of a CMV that identify the hazard class of the cargo. They must be placed on the blank, 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 and blank of the vehicle. A. Top, bottom, left side, rear. B. Front, rear, left side, right side. C. Corners, front, bottom, rear. D. Right side, top, corners, rear. The correct answer is B. Front, rear, left side, right side. A placarded vehicle must have at least four identical placards. They are put on the front, rear, and both sides. Question 46. Often, maximum axle weights are set by a bridge formula. A bridge formula permits less maximum axle weight for axles that are A. Farther apart B. The same C. Closer together D. None of the above The correct answer is C. Closer together a bridge formula permits less maximum weights for axles that are close together to prevent overloading bridges and roadways. Question 47. A vehicle with a high center of gravity is most dangerous in A. Heavy traffic B. Curves C. Shoulders D. Rain The correct answer is B. Curves Top-heavy CMVs with a high center of gravity are at high risk for rolling over. This risk is increased and most dangerous in curves. Question 48. What is the minimum aggregate working load limit of any securement system used to secure cargo from movement? A. One-half times the weight of the cargo. B. Two times the weight of the cargo. C. Three times the weight of the cargo. D. Four times the weight of the cargo. The correct answer is... A one-half times the weight of the cargo. Federal regulations require that the aggregate working load limit of all securement must be no less than one-half times the weight of the cargo. This includes ropes, chains, straps, tensioning devices, etc. Question 49. What is the minimum number of tie-downs for a 20-foot load? A. 4 B. 7 C. 2 D. 8 The correct answer is... C. 2. Cargo should have at least one tie-down for each 10 feet of cargo. No matter how small the cargo is, it should have at least two tie-downs. Question 50. Blank is used in the front, back, and or sides of a piece of cargo to keep it from sliding. A. Bracing. B. Blocking. C. Tie-downs. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... B. Blocking. Blocking is shaped to fit snugly against cargo in the front, back, and or sides. It is secured to the cargo deck to prevent movement. Question 51. Blank is used to prevent cargo movement when it is placed from the upper part of the cargo to the floor and or walls of the cargo compartment. A. Blocking. B. Bracing. C. Tie-downs. D. None of the above. The correct answer is... B. Bracing. Bracing is usually used with the blocking method. Blocking is for the front, back, and sides. Bracing is top and bottom. 
Usually wooden or steel bars are used for this purpose. Question 52. What might happen if the trailer is too high for the tractor's fifth wheel when you try to couple? A. They may not couple correctly and the fifth wheel may get trapped behind the kingpin. B. They may couple correctly but cause steering issues. C. They may not couple correctly and cause brake failure. D. They may couple correctly but cause the cargo to shift. The correct answer is... A. They may not couple correctly and the fifth wheel may get trapped behind the kingpin. When coupling, the purpose is to connect the fifth wheel of the tractor to the kingpin of the trailer. If the trailer is too high when attempting to couple, the tractor's fifth wheel may go behind the kingpin and get trapped. The suspension of the tractor will then need to be lowered or the trailer must be lifted to get the fifth wheel from behind the kingpin. This can be expensive and time-consuming. Always get out and look. Goal. Prior to coupling. Question 53. A trailer jackknife is more common with A. A lightly loaded or empty trailer B. A heavy or overloaded trailer C. A tractor with too much fuel D. None of the above. The correct answer is a. A lightly loaded or empty trailer. When the wheels of a trailer lock up, the trailer may swing around. This is more likely to happen with a lightly loaded or empty trailer. Question 54. How can wet brakes affect your ability to stop? A. Water in the brakes can cause them to become weak. B. Wet brakes can cause wheel lockup. C. Wet brakes can cause a jackknife. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. When driving in heavy rain or deep standing water, brakes can become wet and cause all of the above. Avoid driving through deep puddles or flowing water if possible. If not, gently put on the brakes. Drive slowly and put transmission in low gear. Question 55. Almost all truck driver deaths are due to A, speeding, B, tire blowout, C, rollovers, D. Brake failure. The correct answer is C. Rollovers. Compared to other types of accidents, rollovers are the most dangerous for truck occupants. Question 56. True or false? At least 15% of all heavy truck accidents involve fatigue. A. True. B. False. The correct answer is A. True. It is true that at least 15% of all heavy truck accidents involve fatigue. Research has identified that young males, commercial drivers, shift workers, and those with untreated sleep disorders are at higher risks of fall asleep crashes. Question 57. What is the purpose of the service airline, Blue, on a combination vehicle? A. Holds backup air for the dual air tanks. B. Carries air which is controlled by the foot brake and the tractor or trailer handbrake. C. Holds air for the air conditioner compressor. D. None of the above. The correct answer is B. Carries air which is controlled by the foot brake in the tractor or trailer handbrake. The service air line, also called a control line or signal line, carries air controlled by the foot brake or trailer handbrake in the tractor. Question 58. Why is the emergency airline red on a combination vehicle important? A. It supplies air to the trailer air tanks. B. It controls the emergency brakes on the combination vehicle. C. Loss of air pressure in the emergency line causes the trailer emergency brakes to come on. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. The emergency air line, also called a supply line, has dual purposes. First, it supplies air to the trailer air tanks. Second, it controls the emergency brakes on the combination vehicle. If air pressure is lost, the emergency air line causes the trailer emergency brakes to come on. Question 59. What is the process to test a trailer emergency brakes? A. Charge the trailer air brake system, release, and check that the trailer rolls freely. B. Stop and pull out the trailer air supply control. C. Pull gently on the trailer with the tractor to check that the trailer emergency brakes are on. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. Allow air pressure to build up and change the trailer air brake system 
release and check that the trailer rolls freely. Stop and pull out the trailer air supply control. Pull gently on the trailer with the tractor to check that the trailer emergency brakes are on. All of the above includes the process for testing the emergency brakes. It is important that this system is working, especially when parking on steep grades or on ice. Question 60. What are some important components of the coupling system to check for during an inspection? A. Make sure the fifth wheel is securely mounted to frame up the tractor. B. Make sure that the fifth wheel skid plate has enough grease. C. Make sure that the locking jaws are around the shank of the kingpin. D. All of the above. The correct answer is D. All of the above. All of the above are major components of the coupling system that need to be checked during all types of inspections. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, then check out these videos or click the first link in the description to get your cheat sheet, which will help you pass your CDL exam on your first try.